Mental Training 101. And now back to Get Warrior Tough with Andrew and Dutch. Boom! Off the top rope. It's like WWE around here. Putting the smack down on the hashtag world's worst leader. What is it? Worst kind of leaders. I got it wrong, Dutch. W-K-O-L, hashtag, the worst kind of leaders. That's what it is, right? The worst kind of leaders. I even got it wrong, man. I got to write it down. I don't know. So, Absolutely. You got uh, it. You so got funny. it. funny. All right. So listen, we got like, we're only halfway through. Let's just, we'll we'll run through these. Whichever ones we get done, we get done. If not, um, you could look up the article on Inc. Um, it's called uh, hashtag, the, no, it's not. It's 15 traits of the worst <laughs> leaders. We should, you should hashtag us on Twitter. Hashtag W-K-O-L, worst kind of leader. All right, so this one, you know what, uh, number eight, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but they focus on features rather than performance of the features of their product and all these. It's all like, you know, it's it's look at the bright, shiny ball. Hey, look, a bunny rabbit. Look at all these bells and whistles. But really, the thing doesn't even work, whatever the performance yeah. of the product is. So I've seen that. The before. core is falling apart. Yeah, you got yeah. all these, uh, as we saw, talk about branches and extremities. Yeah. They're strong, but the core is just like falling apart in your hands. <laughs> yeah. So number nine, I don't agree necessarily with this statement that they don't create a company culture. I think that they're not intentional about creating a great company culture or a great culture that's uh, high performance. But by not creating one, you're still creating one. Right. Does right, that make right, sense? Right. right. I, I think I think what they're trying to say in the article is, is they don't understand the value of one of, no. of, 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 a, of a good culture. They just do. They just do what they do, and they don't understand that. Not even like thinking you about said, it. Being intentional, right? Yeah. Being intentional and trying to create that and build that has tremendous value. So, and a lot of people do this. They just do what they do. And if you ask them, um, what is the desire co- company culture? What is the vision? What is like? They have no idea what you're talking about. And and even small businesses, they hadn't oh, talked yeah. about those things. No, they just they, get to you're work. right. They that's right. And I, you know, this is an interesting phenomenon with uh, with businesses across the board. They do stuff that's just good enough for now. Uh, that's we could get away with that. It's good enough for now. We'll say stuff. It's close enough for government work. You know, people make that joke, but that's and that's like a, if you're saying that stuff as a leader, you're adding to a culture not of empowerment and excellence and high performance, but a culture of half stepping and just everything is just you know just enough to get by. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's just. Mm. Here's another one. They don't censor what they say. <laughs> uh, ooh. Eesh. Listen, you got to get this mouth thing in neutral. This is why we teach the two-minute rule, right? Give yourself two minutes of cognitive space. Stop being a first reactor. Become a first responder. You know, ask people how do they mean before you just start running off at the mouth and making a reaction because it really uh, puts you in a jam. And mean what you say. Say what you mean. You know, don't, mm. we don't have to go any further than, than what is, right? When yeah. we go too far away from what is, then we lose what is because we, we think it's something completely different. You know, so say what it is, and, 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 and that's it. Right. Yeah. Like, don't, give me, don't hit me up with the marketing talk while you're trying to give me directions on how to do the job. Just give me the directions mm. on how to do the job. What's the target? You know, and I, you know what I'm talking about when I say marketing talk, Dutch? Mm-hmm. You know, where we make an, everything's like, you know, it's like Leave it to Beaver. Do you remember that show, Leave it to Beaver? No, no, I don't, I don't remember that. Ah, I almost got you. I almost got you. What no, show I mean, is where that? Everything, I, yeah, it's just like where everything's all happy and everything's nice and nobody gets in trouble and there's no, there's no stress and there's no, I mean, it's all just, you know, it's like a Betty that, Crocker commercial. Was that one of those shows that was in, like, black and white yeah, before Color was, came out? Yes, yeah, I don't know yeah. anything about those shows. Yeah, I know, right. All right. The worst <laughs> kind of leaders in the world, the worst kind of hashtag WKOL. See, I'm getting it right now. The worst kind of leaders, they care more about money, it says, than their customers, but also say than their Ooh. employees. I'm going to add yeah. the employees on there. They care more Ooh. about money than people. I tell you what, and, and we see a lot of examples of this in the real world today. Walking around and just, I mean, just looking at any situation on the news when it comes to corporations and money, you <laughs> know, it always comes down to that bottom line instead of the customer or the employee. It's about the bottom line, right. as if the employee or the customers have nothing to do with the bottom line. Right. And listen, and, I know I get we need the bottom line, and I'm a metrics guy. I want to know what the bottom line is, and I know we have we're in it to make money, and it is profit. But I don't make I don't make money by running over people, mm. right? I'm not going to damage people, damage customers, damage. I'm not that. It, it, that's what we call criminality. 
Except mm. that happens all the time in business where we just run over people to to get the bottom line. And it's just, you know, people put up with it, though. I got to tell you, Dutch, the employees and customers both put up with it. Yep, yep. I, t- I tell you what, and as a leader, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to identify that. Being about the bottom line, it, it, it helps that one time. But being about the customer and the employee helps the next 20, 30, 50, 100 yeah. times. And that's what we're about, providing real value. Listen, we're going to get paid, okay? We want to get paid. But we're going to give you like 10 times at least 10 times whatever you paid us in value. And our goal mm. is to give you 100 times. So I know this blows, this kind of sounds crazy, but listen to this, Dutch. So here's my thought process is, the last time that I took a job as an employee, I got a W-2. I was making 65000 a year. My goal was to give them 100 times that. So that's $6.5 million in value for the year. Mm. Right? But even if you only did 10 times, that's 650000 in value. Now, I could go off on this, but a lot of people, they think, oh, I got laid up. Listen, if you're the one providing 10 times and let alone 100 times, when layoffs come down, do you think they're getting rid of you if you're providing 100 times what they're paying you? Nobody on the planet is going to get rid of you if you're providing real value Mm. to that scope. It's just not going to happen. The people that get laid off are the ones taking a check or they're getting paid more than they're bringing in. And it's not that we care more about the money than you. You got to understand that's how it functions. And you as the customer or as the employee need to say, how much am I going to bring to the organization if you want to be cared about more? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. It's just about bringing real value. All right. Mm. Number 12. (laughs) They're driven by ego. Mm. Now, this is interesting because you would think that an egomaniac has good Mm self-esteem. No, man. Exactly. An egomaniac, you know, somebody who's egotistical, it's a red flag for me that they need our what, Dutch? They need our help. They do need our help. They have low self-esteem, and they're trying to overcompensate for the fact that they're uh, afraid to get rejected. So it's really just like a defense mechanism. And it always comes out. It might not come out today or tomorrow, but it's going to come out. I mean, you, you're you going to find out. You're going to see them crumbled up someday in a corner, and it's going to be revealed what's really going on. And it's going to be a mirror play, that, that egomaniacal uh, yep. person that, that was, you know, trying to make all the decisions based on what, what he or she wanted or what they, their interests are, it always comes out in the wash. Some way, shape, or form, you're going to get found out. So if you're doing that, stop it. Yeah, because – and you know what? And it's fat, you could short-circuit that day of reckoning if you come across like Dutch and I because we'll help you figure it out before you – so, you know, go to GetWarriorTough.com. If you're an egomaniac, you need our help. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mean it. Eight six four nine seven seven one four four three. 967 1443 Okay, number 13, they're overly optimistic. And you know, I, you know, Dutch, you know I hate positive thinking, man. Oh, no question. Positive thinking will get you killed faster than negative thinking. So if you've got to be one, an emotional thinker, at least think negatively. I, I'm not going to mm. be around you, but at least it'll keep you alive. Because if everything's <laughs> sunshine and waterfalls, man. It, it, but, you, but you know, the, the, again, we go back to... Um, it is what it is, right? Yeah. If you tell me what it is, and we have a plan, and you tell me what the plan is moving forward, and we have a good plan, and we have a plan based on things being positive, then I can be positive based on a plan that I have, right? I can come to you with all kind of positivity based on a great plan instead of just being positive or optimistic. Like, what, right. is, what is that? You know, I, I don't want your optimism. I, wanna, I want your optimism, and I want to know why you're optimistic. Like, yeah. I need to know. What's the, the plan? The facts. Yeah, give me yeah, the, plan, the plan, man. How are we going to execute? What's the execution formula? And I ain't going to be mad at you if you're optimistic because of this. Like, well, this is why I think it's going to work because we have X, Y, and Z. Yeah. We've you, been doing A, B, and C, and that's homework. why one, two, and three is going to happen. And I'm like, hey, man, yeah. I'm optimistic yeah. too now that I've seen the plan. Right. Not just I could lay down on the highway and I won't get run over by a truck because they'll see me and swerve. That's not a plan. Right. Now, that, if you told me to lay down in, in, in the middle of the street, I'm going to say why. And you can say, well, between one and two, zero cars have come by here in the past eight months. And then, you know, But there's still got to be a reason. I still need to, like, what's the reward? Because right. I still but ain't doing it. you give me information as opposed to saying, hey, just yeah. lay down. We won't get hit. Yeah, no, and if they see you, don't worry. They'll swerve. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, number 14, they never ask for help. Uh, okay, let me get on this one. Yeah, all right, go on. Uh, these people are just dumb. 
<laughs> now say what listen dutch we're amongst friends here on this show you can uh, don't hold back you can say whatever you want subtlety to I'll the wind tell, tell us what you really uh, think <laughs> i tell you what buddy i'm asking for help uh it, just think about it the answer is there that's like not checking uh that's not like not using google ever or not looking in your encyclopedia as a kid when you have a, a research mm -hmm. project or not not actually doing the experiment well, you know you're asking for help you're trying to find solutions you know, everybody's in play. Well, everyone that the teacher tells you is in play is in play, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't you ask for help? That's a horrible sign uh, of, of, of leadership is when you cannot ask for help. Yeah, or directions, or directions. Now, this the GPS is uh. where technology has helped out a lot of marriages because now with the GPS, I don't have to stop and ask for directions because <laughs> Maggie will give them to me. Recalculating right, right. route. Recalculating <laughs> route. Right? You know what I'm talking about, man? Okay. <laughs> but so, so does that make number 15 the, the arguably the worst one? It could be the because worst one. Them. What is it? Go ahead, shout it out. They don't learn from their mistakes. Oh, my God. Oof. Right? God, we got about a minute left to knock this one out because we all make them, right? Yeah. We all make mistakes. And we don't deny that they're coming, but you got to learn from them. Here's the problem, Dutch. Like the first time you do it, it's a mistake, right? The second time it happens, it may be carelessness, but by the third time, it's an on purpose, man. Mm. If you didn't learn from it, it ain't a mistake anymore. It's an on purpose, okay? Yes. Yes. And you got to learn from them, man. I'm telling you, we got to get better. And, you know, the mistakes are fine when you get better, right? And, and how about making some different mistakes? Not the same mistakes over and over again. That's what I, I tell my children. There's nothing wrong with mistakes, but we don't want to make the same mistakes. Let's, let's, let's uh, spread our wings and make some new mistakes. Right? right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> So these these traits these are this is the flip side of the coin. This is kind of what you know the hashtag worst kind of leader W K O L. So you could just do the opposite of these things and you'll end up being the best kind of leader hashtag B K O L, right? Wow. But but we see this much more than we see the opposite of this. So that's why I thought it was very. Um, it's helpful for me to see the negative, the flip side of it, just as a learning exercise. So, so this, this is another exercise and a challenge for, for everyone listening out there, right? Go back and re-listen to the show. You know, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on the, on the app. Yeah. Uh, you know, go back and listen to it and write down all 15 of these, right? Write down all 15 uh, traits of this bad leader and write down the opposite. Write it down yeah. right beside it. That's and a great you exercise. Target, you target those 15 to be a, a part of who you are, your core. Mm. Your your uh your persona, your leadership toolbox. I am now these fifty. I aspire to be these fifteen things. Oh, that's so good. I mean, and and you know what? I know that the vast majority of folks won't do it, that. Less than one percent are going to do what you just asked them to do, Dutch. And you know who those one percent end up being? The one percent. The one percent. Okay. There's a reason they're the one percent because they do the hard thing, like what Dutch just said. Only one percent of you will probably do it. And the rest of you would be like, yeah, that was great. And then you're on to the next thing and blah, blah. And then, But you still not wonder why you're not getting any further ahead in life. Ah, oh, great show tonight, man. I tell you, we got to do the work. If, that's, if anything, you got to do the work. Oh. I love you, bud. Love you too, brother. <laughs>